I am who I am today, in part because similar to Alandria Williams in our reading, in my UU congregation growing up, I was given the opportunity to be a leader, a teacher, to practice talking in front of people and building worship and programs. And it didn't always go well. Sometimes I completely bombed. But I also remember teaching a liturgical dance to a Pearl Jam song, and my dad and other members of the choir danced with me during worship. As a kid, I handed out programs at anti-nuclear war meetings and sang with my parents at church events. As a teen, I served on the library committee. I taught Sunday school. I also worked with my peers to replace the chalice in our worship space after the youth group accidentally melted down the previous one when we let a fire get too big and the chalice was made of pewter. After college, when I was a young adult and back visiting the church, I was chatting with the parent of one of the kids that I had taught in Sunday school and learned that he still talked about the day we learned about rites of passage and he got to be the dead body when we covered memorial services. And thank goodness he talked about it in a good way. I had no memory of that class. And in that moment had a window into how much impact we can have on another person's experience and the real responsibility there. That could have gone a very different way. <laughs> Healthy intergenerational community builds a container where people get to try new things, take risks in a safe place, fail or succeed and try again. It's a place where we can explore our identities and roles, change and learn. And this is important for all of us, but particularly for young people, being in a community with safe, encouraging, supportive people who love you, no matter what, even when you melt down the chalice, can be transformational. As we find ourselves in new stages of life and wrestle with existential questions, challenges, or loss, having community is so important. In a healthy church community, there's an opportunity for deep sharing and learning together with boundaries and covenant. And because we are learning together, an expectation of being in right relationship. So we have tools to call each other in when we cause harm. We can remember that we are in this together. I also love going out with friends and talking about challenges and memories from a lifetime of love and knowing each other. That is real and important, but different. We need all sorts of communities, people who know and love us in different ways, who can help us grow and be grounded. In our congregation, we have a call and opportunity to foster intergenerational community for spiritual exploration, for doing justice work together, for having fun, for challenging each other. We have an opportunity to be the amazing gift of a community where we can be our full selves, try new things, succeed and fail for one another. Throughout the pandemic, I have been treading water in a lot of aspects of my life because it was too hard to do more than that. You may be able to relate. In my work as your minister, I count it as a huge win that we made it through the pandemic as strong as we did. There was a lot of good work done from making worship more accessible, to our widening the circle study, checking in on one another, and even building new programs. We made mistakes and struggled too. Our work together kept us a congregation over the last two and a half years. So coming back from sabbatical, I've been really thinking about what comes next in order to move past treading water. 
which do not discount is also important. <laughs> I need to push myself as your minister and encourage all of us to think about who we want to be as a community, why we gather, why we do church, fundamental questions that are so important. Now, our answers may change over time, but we need to do more than tread water, and we need to know why. I am grateful that I am in this community with you. I am grateful that I have the opportunity to work with you, to deepen our understanding of who we are as individuals, as we wrestle with fundamental questions about why it is we're here and what this community means to us. One of the things that I admire so much about this congregation and the culture here is that when presented with a simple question, be it for spiritual reflection or really anything, y'all are able to go really deep. An openness to spiritual seeking and an expectation of spiritual grounding has been foundational in this congregation. And I think part of why we have been relatively such a healthy organization over time. So many of you are ready to dive in and be really thoughtful and ready to grow your skills in reflection and to learn. And so I wanna rely on that resilience and openness. I think we are uniquely positioned not only to continue to be thoughtful and compassionate and supportive of one another, but to throw open our doors and welcome anybody in the community who needs a spiritual home. Not because it's important to quote, do church, not because there's some creedal dictate, not because we won't make mistakes, but because we get so much out of being here that we want others to have that opportunity too. I want us to share out of our abundance and not, as Diane said last week in reference to something else, hide our light under a bushel. I'm gonna let it shine, right? Let's not keep this to ourselves. During the height of the pandemic, our worship and lives were very much focused on the present because that's where we had to be. Now, in our congregation, we need to think about the future. I invite you to reflect on what you are grateful for in your life, what you are grateful for in this community, and consider who else might need that too. Maybe you talk to somebody out in the world, and maybe when somebody walks through the door, you're able to have a conversation with them about why you are here. As we welcome new people into the circle of community, we have committed to continuing practices that help us break down barriers to connection and change. We have committed to examine our assumptions and our biases and act with accountability. When we make mistakes, we can own them and make repair because we are not an ideal, we are a living, breathing community. I am grateful for all of you. I am grateful to have this calling. I want us to move with intention into the future. Unitarian Universalism can be a life-saving faith. Our congregations can be safe places to explore new ideas, roles, and identities, to learn and grow, to love and be loved. This congregation is an imperfect, beautiful one that can offer intergenerational, supportive, spiritually grounded community to seekers. I invite you to reflect on your understanding of who we are and why we gather, because really that's the biggest questions we have before us right now. And then we can help each other share that with the wider world 
and grow into our future together. So may it be, and amen.